Hello. With me today is Joost Hiltemann, the Programme Director of International Crisis Groups, Middle East and North Africa Programme. Joost, the Syrian war is now in its, its fifth year. It appears to be completely stalemated. Everything seems to have been tried to sort it out. What, what is the situation? What, what can be done now to end this awful conflict? Well, I should say that in previous reports, uh, we have highlighted the dynamics of the conflict and have shown over time that, in fact, this conflict uh, cannot be resolved uh, on the ground militarily. Uh, the purpose of the policy statement is to, is to say that, uh, but in, in very uh, summary form, and to say that because of that, uh, it is necessary to find a, a, uh, a, a deal, a basic deal between the, the backers of the various sides in the Syrian conflict that addresses their core concerns and to turn the, the vicious circle of the, of the military conflict into a virtuous cycle uh, based on political negotiations. Th this is the purpose of this uh, uh, policy statement, uh, which is a departure from the kind of uh, in-depth reporting we have done on the Syrian conflict uh, so, so far, and that we will continue doing as well. The various parties seem to be absolutely blocked into their various policies. What is it that's going to change their calculus? Nothing will change their calculus until they are exhausted um, and they realize that, in fact, their side cannot win um, and, in, and that, that, in fact, there is no victory in this war possible for anyone well, the costs are mounting, financial, and of course, uh, that's for them, but also humanitarian. And the threat of, of um, uh, the conflict uh, metastasizing into the region. We already see uh, four active conflicts in the region right now, Libya, Syria, Iraq, and Yemen. Um, and, and the threat is that these conflicts become interconnected. Um, so we need to contain these conflicts and we need to find political processes to, to end them. And I think when states realize what the stakes are for them and that these conflicts will eventually affect them at home, um, they may be persuaded that in fact we need to move from uh, trying to fight an unwinnable conflict in Syria uh, to, 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 the to the negotiating table and to, to a political solution. When Crisis Group looks at the balance of power between the major, major regional players, Iran, Saudi Arabia and Turkey, for instance, how does it see that those apparently radically different regional agendas can be balanced? Well, with great difficulty. Um, but, you know, these are regional powers that can also talk to each other at some level uh, and have a long history of doing so, especially Turkey and uh, Iran, of course. And I think um, that uh, if, if, we, if, we, if we chart the, the outlines of a, of a geostrategic deal between these powers um, and with help of, of international powers, uh, United States and Russia, most importantly, uh, whose interests also need to be preserved, of course, in this conflict, um, then, then perhaps we, we, can, we can move forward. And so the idea is, is that um, you know, what, what, what the United States and Turkey and the Gulf states want is the removal of the regime of Bashar al-Assad. And realistically speaking, even if Bashar al-Assad's regime were to win this conflict militarily, and I don't think it can, but even if it could, it could not effectively govern Syria from then onward. It, it, the situation has gone too far, there's been too much destruction, uh, there is no popular support for this regime. So, so we need to come to a situation where the regime would be uh, transitioned out, let's put it that way. Uh, the quid pro quo is that uh, Iran needs to uh, know, to be comfortable, that its interests are also preserved. And its core interest has been to, uh, in some kind of regime, of, of, uh, that would protect its core interest of maintaining a link to, uh, to Lebanon and, and to Hezbollah. Um, this link has not been destroyed by subsequent military efforts to, to, to get rid of it, and so it's become a, f a fact on the ground, and we need to acknowledge that as well. It is something that can be addressed in the future, possibly, mm -hmm. but as, in order to bring peace to Syria, we have to acknowledge that uh, that is a core interest for Iran. On the other hand, the other side needs to be convinced that, uh, need, and needs to be uh, assured that uh, the, 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 the current regime goes, but that the state is preserved in some form as well, and that Syria can become sort of a neutral state in the region. It's not linked one way or another to either side in this, uh, this regional uh, power struggle between Iran and the Gulf states. Outsiders may be able to sit down and think up 
and beautifully balanced plans for Syria. But on the ground, there are some forces that are gaining power. We've seen over the last year or two that uh, jihadi Salafi forces have made real progress in Syria and are dominating the agenda. Where do you think that's going? Could that upset all these uh, uh, diplomatic ideas? Well, the growth of the jihadi groups is, is very dangerous for Syria, of course, because the, the original conflict uh, was between the regime and the opposition. The opposition was uh, very mainstream. It started as a popular revolt, of course, until uh, arms started arriving and different uh, backers started to compete with one another. Um, uh, the lack of, of victory uh, of the mainstream opposition has led to its radicalization. Um, and so uh, the more this conflict drags on, uh, the more you will see this trend of, of, uh, of radicalization. And these jihadi groups count among them uh, some very powerful groups that also have transnational agendas. So their, their target is not only the Syrian regime, but it's, it's beyond that. So we need, we need to address that particular problem. But the, the solution is not to have one of the, the two sides in the Syrian conflict win, because we know it's not possible. Um, we also should make sure that the mainstream opposition uh, retains enough power to, to, uh, to balance the regime uh, and then to come to a political solution. Then you can address the problem of the jihadis, which definitely uh, will probably have to be addressed. There's two ways of doing it, or one way, but I will have two parts of it. One is you want to, to regain some of the, the Syrian fighters who have gravitated towards these radical groups uh, by giving them hope that in fact there is going to be a new Syria that it's worth working in and, and fighting for. The, the other ones will have to be defeated. The foreigners will have to be defeated or, or, or you know, removed from Syria. Um, and the Syrian ones will, will have to be done. The ones who don't want to be part of any political deal, they will have to be fought. But that, that none of this is easy. None of this is going to happen anytime fast. But there is no other way. Uh, how do you explain this paradox that the US has not managed to uh, have a very clear approach and how can that men be mended? Yeah, the, the Washington's approach has been muddled and certain promises have been made and then not really implemented. Um, there's been, you know, a, a shifting uh, of priorities and, and so um, that hasn't helped and it has caused uh, confusion. Um, so, for example, you know, Washington has said that it, it supports the mainstream rebels against the regime, um, but it hasn't really done anything really to help that mainstream uh, uh, the mainstream opposition and in fact it has said it hasn't any real partners to work with because so many of them have gravitated to the radical groups so now uh, the Obama administration has, a, has is starting a, a train and equip uh, program and that's all fine and good because at least that shows then that it is willing to to support a mainstream uh, opposition but then is it really also planning to protect these these uh, rebels that's going to train and equip uh, and that plan is not there so why, if I am a, a, a rebel who, who does not want to move towards these radical groups, why would I uh, accept this kind of American support if I know that you know, I'm only ex making myself vulnerable to the, to the regime's air power the moment they see that I'm being trained and equipped by the United States? Um, it, may, it doesn't make sense. On the other hand, also the United States has said that um, uh, you know, it is opposed to, uh, to the regime, and yet uh, when it is uh, carrying out airstrikes, the United States against uh, the, the Islamic State or other radical groups like Jabhat al-Nusra, it is tolerating the, the, the regime's air force to operate also within these areas and use barrel bombs against the civilian population. So if I'm a Syrian, what, do, what am I supposed to think? That, what side is the United States on? Uh, it is allowing the Syrian regime to bomb me? I mean, it doesn't make sense, right? And I, I think uh, this kind of confusion is, is, is playing against uh, Washington's interests, and it needs to clarify this, uh, you know, pretty, pretty quickly. You've described an incredibly complicated and difficult situation. Is it possible to boil down crisis groups' uh, proposals into a step-by-step -step plan that can show the Syrian war the way out of its labyrinth? You know, we're clear that on the ground this battle cannot be fought by either side. The party's backers, external backers, be it the Gulf states or Iran or, or Russia or the United States, uh, are still thinking that their side can win. Uh, and, and, and even if, if they realize it cannot, they, they, they're putting all their resources in ensuring that the other side won't win. But the other side won't win. And so our message is, is that we need to have a, a deal, uh, a basic quid pro quo uh, on, on a regional level and on international level, 
that preserves the core interests of the backers of the various sides. And this, in our view, is within reach. If the sides can be persuaded that this exists, then we can turn this vicious circle of the war into a virtual circle of political negotiations. Then we can build a political process led by the United Nations um, that, that can move this situation forward. But without that, um, we shouldn't go back to Geneva and, and bring various groups together because the groups are not going to make peace with each other. It has to be done at the regional level. Um, and, and we cannot start with ceasefires. Ceasefires are, are critical to ending the war, but they should be an integral part of a political process which itself is based on this essential regional quid pro quo. Joost Hiltzman, thank you very much. Thank you.